What's going on guys? So today on this sugar review, we're going to take a look at something really, really cool. Because normally we don't. Something like that. Either way, it is a new transformer <laughs> from Flame Toys and is their Zero One Drift. So it's the first thing they've done so far. And I'm not entirely certain what the Kuro Kura. Uh, Kuro Kura Kara Curry. Man, that's hard to say exactly what that is, but hey, it's a thing. Now, just first and foremost, of course, this doesn't actually transform. It is just a very high-end figure. We'll get the figure here in a little bit, but we're going to take a look at the packaging and the excess stuff inside packaging. Yoink. Now you've got the nice Flame Toys logo up here, and that, of course, and nice artist rendition of Drift right there. And we've come down. That's a good hefty package, by the way. You got illustrator is Hyogyo Funabashi. You got painter is Hiroyuki Hirose, Deco Mass Lab, and mechanic design is Chemical Attack. And of course, you've got Transformers Autobot logo there, Transformers logo there, 01 Drift. So this is an actual official licensed product. It's not a third party deal. And you got Transformers 01 Drift. Come over here. You got Drift. You got a little image from the side. Come around the back. You got Transformers 01 Drift. All your warnings, this, that, and the other. Hasbro. And all the fun stuff. Info at d4toys.com. And I believe you can actually order those things. And you also, if you want to follow Flame Toys on Facebook, there it is right there. And you got d4toys.com there. Age 15 plus. Hey, I'm right in the middle of that. Now, the cool thing is, he's got his nice open packaging. Got a little magnet. Holding it shut somewhere over here. So you just pop that open. And we sort of saw this a little bit when I was at Hobby Town, which is of course where I picked it up. And you've got nice images up here and it says, Deadlock is dead. My name is Drift. So in case you don't know the backstory on Drift, I definitely suggest Googling then, go and check out the wiki. He has a very, very extensive history and even how he became a Drift in the first place. So, you've got those nice images there. Very hefty, very sturdy box. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit. We're going to have some glare. So, the figure would be right here with a little bit of bubble wrap. And you've got a multitude of hands. So, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus the ones on them. Eight pairs of hands. You've got his two hip swords, his great sword, and a couple spare faces. So we're going to go over all that here in a second. If you pull this out of here, there's actually another layer. Underneath would be his stand, plus the instructions, and one other accessory. But let's go ahead and pull the figure out here and see how awesome he is. Alright, so we've got drift back out here and just looking absolutely fantastic and once again this is not an actual transformer it is a very high-end posable figure there's quite a lot of die cast in this guy along with electronics and other things but the paintwork on it is really ridiculous i do believe pretty much everything is totally painted from this really nice gold and got some almost titanium or silver right inside there this lightish gray color, you got silver down here, more gold bits, kind of an offset, that light gray, more kind of silver, a little bit of kind of dark gray gunmetal-y color, dark gunmetal frame, hard to see there, red paint here on the heels, this all feels nice and sturdy. We've got some translucent blue parts right there, that obviously will come into play later on coming up here you got some nice dark gray on the thighs lots of gold even some gunmetal paint right here on those vents you got some more of that frame color inside the thigh there nice supplemental sliding parts gotta love that he's very gundam like and and just drifts overall appearance is incredibly gundam like now i'm going to switch over to the back real quick because this is where a lot of detail is you got silver, you've got gold, you've got these vents back here by these little winglets. That looks so good. Got a little bit here. Gold, different whites. And then you've got all the silver venting here. 
and then more of that kind of titanium or silver color right here really nicely molded you got gold and gunmetal all right through there it's just totally totally awesome and on the chest you've got some more gold gunmetal silver translucent blue some kind of black color right through here the very core of the chest where the cockpit is <laughs> if he was actually a gundam it wouldn't be hard to make a gundam like this like you definitely have to do some scratch building but there's so much very gundam like about him it wouldn't be too hard now you do get autobot symbols right here with a little bit of white paint those are red translucent bits for lighting up and you got some yellow translucent kind of headlights i guess is what they should be right there got the kind of off-white color here some silver gunmetal more silver and the white is a kind of nice pearlescent white i really do dig this guy and we'll go over posability and stuff like that here in a bit but let's take a look at that face sculpt as good as i can you guys know lighting up a face is not always easy zoom in on that and this particular face is the kind of scowling face now he does have some nice blue eyes but i'm gonna have a hard time catching that because they are translucent but you got the gold right here on the vent face you got gray face white teeth white chin red stripe going through there little gold crest right there he's very pr very kind of prime like in nature and that's actually pretty cool there's almost a v-fin <laughs> that's from being Gundams. Now I'm pointing out the face because you do get a couple of spare and swappable faces. You get a yelling face and the cool, calm, collected face. And it's not easy to swap these, but basically you want to come up here, kind of grab the crest, and be careful. This is a plastic piece and incredibly pointy. So. So pull that off so you give him kind of a horse horse face situation going on here now they just tab in i do wish they'd gone magnetic but you see right there just a big open slot and of course the translucent part the hard part is actually getting the faces off that one actually didn't fight me too much but if we want to go with the yelling face You get that look, which is pretty cool. And we're gonna stick this back on here. Just line it back up. And you got a very angry drift. And there he is with his calm face. Now, I actually really do dig this one. This is the one that he comes with out of the packaging. Let me zoom back out a little bit. Now to get the yelling face off, Kind of had to use a little bit of a plastic pry tool. Um, they do stick in place, like I said before. So that is a thing. Let me zoom out all the way. Back him up. I'll take a look at more accessories. Because there's quite a lot of hands to work with. So starting out, you have the regular little fist hands that come on him, but you can totally give him these little thumbs up hands. Other than giving a thumbs up, I don't actually know what these would be for. Now the cool thing is the hands are super easy to swap. Literally just pull them off, just a peg in the wrist, and you give him some thumbs up hands. Now you want to be careful about that cuff. It does feel like coming off. So he can really be like, hey. <laughs> you also get these kind of reaching out hands. Something like that. Those are pretty cool. You get some karate chop slash kind of waving hands. Hi. My name is Drift. You get some little teapot kind of hands. And you get some solar flare hands. And last but not least, of course, you do get a couple different sets of sword holding hands. You get some very basic kind of grip here. 
both left and right and then you have a more of a gotta have my thumbs up on the handle kind and both of these do work for the multitude of swords but for the most part you're gonna use these so for now we're gonna go ahead and put these on mr drift mr this mr drift to you my name is mr drift so this is probably the hand's going to use more than anything, but since you have literally like eight pairs to play with, you can always find another use for them. And of course, since we're going to talk swords, we may as well talk swords. So you do get two of these bad boys. And yeah, that looks identical because I'm holding one in reverse. So very much also like a Gundam. These just mount by plugging into these sides. But before we do that, you just look at the nice paint. You got the nice white on there. You got the darker silver, the kind of lightish gray. You've got the red. You've got the molded in. What's that molded in? A little clipped on part here that does plug in there. A little gold dot here and there. And of course, the sword itself. So let's go ahead and put these on his waist. And like I said, this is very Gundam like. And you want to do it with the fins facing upward. And whenever I bought this, I was talking to Josh about it. Somebody had a thing for like 50s Cadillacs. Like just judging by the fins, the kind of captured headlight sort of deal going on. You know, same thing here with the fins. Maybe that's just me. I'm thinking 50s caddies. So there's the swords mounted to his body. You can tilt them up about as far as you need to. But just want to make sure you don't hinder any of the articulation. And they do move up, down, and they swivel just a little bit. But of course, that's what they do in their sheaths. Sheaths, scabbards. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them out like so. And you get some very fat, short blades like so now the only thing that's a little bit different from his kind of comic book counterpart that would have cybertronian going down the side here instead of just these little like almost fuller grooves um then you got this nice red stripe down here very nice silver paint not super sharp and i like how they get basically like this gundam the gundam gray like this guy is seriously a gundam i don't i'm just gonna go ahead and say it Let's just give him uh, the Gundam mouth instead of that, and we really wouldn't know any different. You also got, I think this might be paint the brown for the handle. It's either paint or that's the actual mold of the plastic. Because you got the dark, the kind of dark gray, almost my favorite dark gray ever here. And a little bit of gold right there on the pommel. And he holds these very, very nicely. Oh, by the way, the hands were all soft plastic. I didn't cover that. But that's what allows you to get the weapons in here like any good figure would do. You just want to kind of... I always struggle to put them in, but then they're so easy to get back out. It's like ridiculous. Basically, you just want to push it in, get it past the thumb. And it's no big deal, honestly. Just push it in. That's why I think that the, the brown is actually plastic, not paint, because that would rub so much it'd be ridiculous and there you have him holding his little twin sword bladies and i don't remember if he actually got these from wing or not i know that he got the great sword from wing but these are pretty cool and the handles are very nice the wrists do give you enough articulation to really play with them once we get into the articulation mode we'll really see what he can do but as for these swords that's going to be it. And last but not least on his swords, well certainly not least, you have his great sword. And I think believe this thing is supposed to be some kind of Cybertronian relic. It might even be something of a spark extracting sword, something along those lines. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Of course here it is in its sheath or scabbard or whatever you want to call it. You've got some really dark gray, almost black, same brown for the handles. You've got gold details all over there, and even a slightly different gold for this. You can see the shine is a little different. Red paint here, red paint down here, gold paint all the way down there. Nicely molded detail, also very hard sheath. And it will mount on the back. 
So it does come with this clip back here, and you do have to plug this in when you first get him. And you've got a couple notches right in there. Really hard to see. It's in a shot. There we go. And, of course, the paint will probably rub over time. But that is the great sword. Kind of mounted. Get in there. There. Now, it's kind of a loose fit, if I'm honest. And I have popped it off a multitude of times. So, it just be careful. And, of course, you guys, you, you don't want to see it in the sheath. Though, that thing does give him some substantial height. So, we'll just come back here, hold on to the sheath, and pull out the sword. Now, this thing is definitely one of the best party pieces of this entire figure. It's going to be hard to see. But, the molded detail is so beautiful. The gold along with this... Like gunmetal with some dark silver on here on the blade. It's just absolutely wonderful. Got a translucent bubble right there. A little gold going on on the inside. Now, the figure might not transform, but his sword does. So all you have to do is push the handle in, and you get this automorph feature. So now you've got this copper that looks very much like the matrix of leadership with the blue if i remember correctly it either is powered by his spark and there was a lot of things i read when doing minor research for this it might be powered by his spark is what it is and it just looks awesome it just it looks kind of holy in a way now this i know he got from wing before wing died and he learned a whole lot of things now i think you should be able to dual wield this thing but I'm not sure, or at least dual handle, but he can definitely hold it in one hand, that's for sure, just gotta get it past the thumb as usual, <laughs> now this one's gonna be hard, there we go, so he can hold on to that, now I think that the hand that comes with the thumb Sticking up is probably more in line with using with this sword because it doesn't really hold on to it super well. So let's go ahead and try that. That's a left hand. I need the right hand because all my swordsmen are right-handed. And you can just do a loose kind of hold on it, but it gives you a tilt as well. So pull off that hand. Go ahead and give him this one. There we go. And now you've got Drift holding that ridiculous sword. And like I said, let's see if we using some of this ridiculous articulation on this guy, if we can actually dual wield. Because I haven't tried this yet. And, and there's a lot of things that are not in the instructions. I'll be very clear on that. Like, hey, how do I do this? They tell you a lot of things, but, I mean, some things I think they just assume you'll figure out um no don't think it can actually dual wield it at least not that way but who cares well, the sword is awesome it just it is what it is look at that it's just so pretty i'm gonna have to figure out what my thumbnail is gonna be like for this guy but he's so good looking Now, of course, one of the main gimmicks of this figure is the electronic light-up features. And they're really cool, and yet a pain in the butt at the same time. Now, you do have to install all the batteries that comes with LR44s and another one. Uh, two different types of batteries for at least uh, the shoulders up here and I believe the chest all use the same types but the little leg parts use something different. Now we'll start at the leg parts because they're the easiest to do. And you just pull them off and you can see the LED is literally right there. And you have a super tiny on and off switch, but you can flip it with your finger, no problem. Now I might have to turn one of my lights off to get the full effect here. Because these are super bright. Now, to do the shoulders, really cool kind of hidden switch. You just want to pull up on 
this part. Now, if you have your fingers anywhere along here, you will hinder the transformation slash light up gimmick. So you pull that up. That pops out the back and lights up his headlights. Do that one. You can see a little bit better. Now to do the head and the chest is slightly more difficult. Come back here, right behind the sword, you see that little bitty flap right there. You need a tool. You can actually use the sword itself if you really want to. Because I actually have done that before. So flipping that open, not a big deal. But trying to flip that switch, unless you have super tiny little fingers, you're not going to do it. So you want to flip it like so. Go ahead and stick the sword back on just for effect. And there you have your drift lit up and looking beautiful. So you got the lights going on down here. You got the lights going on in the shoulders and the chest and then coming up through the face. Now what I did just did there was accidentally push that in. So I like some of the transformation gimmick, but that also gives you the ability to see his not dead eyes. Now just real quick. Oh yeah, that looks cool. And if you guys haven't noticed, his feet keep sliding. So it's a little bit not, you know, sticky here for the base. <laughs> so his feet are very smooth. So they do keep wanting to slide out from under him. Now, being that these batteries are kind of small, they probably will drain after being on. Now, I did see a cool thing in, I guess, whatever convention they were showing this guy off. They did have him completely wired up to USB powered. If you want to go that far by all means it's not going to be easy given that the circuitry is hidden in here and embedded in the chest these no big deal but it that would save having to flip switches all the time if you ever wanted more stuff now since we're still on accessories and he does have a very very big one could bring it out and you have the action base and i assume that all of the figures coming in this line will come with this really big base. It's very much like a Gundam action base. You have the adjustable bottom here so you can slide it back and forth on this little hingy part. And if you want to have it in the middle or you want to knock it back a little bit further, you can just come back here, push in these tabs. I'm kind of pushing from both. There we go. And you just knock it back a hair and then just do that. It does adjust height wise. You just come back here and you can raise it up, and lower it down. You can make a real squat, whatever you want to do. We'll go for a mid range. One problem is, you can't really see what's going on back here. There we go. So that is about as high as it can go. And you have the big tab here. Tilt it a little further forward. And this part does work. You just have to pull it off. Do not try to rotate that. You will snap off the ratcheted teeth. And you have a hole back here in the butt like we saw earlier. And it does just plug into the unfortunate zone. And you just got to find the right angle, which was clearly that one. And adjust accordingly. And now you've got your drift, at least in this case, floating. Go up a little bit. <laughs> it does look good. I want to get a picture of that. Nice. Okay. So, still not done with accessories because he still has one, kind of two more. And it is the cool cloak. Now... I like the weathering done on this. It's got some like real fat splatter and some like dust going on. They shredded the edges a little bit, although they're like a perfectly clean edge. That's a problem. And they are wired, which is actually very nice. When it comes out of the packaging, it's like this. So you just kind of have to fold it over. It is stitched fairly nicely. And you can pose it however you like. I like how it's got a big X going across there. I have it to where it's blowing that way ish uh, putting it on is not super difficult so what you want to do is raise your light up just slightly so you have room you want to pop the 
kind of V fin off like you're taking the head off. Be very careful. Don't really do it the way I just did it because that was incredibly scary. Now you do have to take the great sword off. You want to unplug this. There is no uh, cutout in the back for that, which is kind of an oversight, I would think. And you just want to drop it down over his head. Basically, you're going to dress him like you're putting a poncho on a child. Drift, put your jack, put your coat on before you go outside. You're going to catch cold. I don't know what mother that was. It didn't even sound like mine. Okay. Now, you want to make sure you get it about as good as you can through the hole. And you can move the swords accordingly, do what you got to do. You can spread the shoulders out, maybe. Get a little more room to work. And you can have it kind of blowing in the wind. Like I said, if you want to, you can pull the sword out. Though if you really want to make him look a little bit more like a vagabond, go ahead and pull those off entirely. And then you can use the wires to just make things happen however you want now the hard part is what you got to do with this guy so you got a scarf it is wired it's weathered the same way slightly different color on the material or just not as dirty and you just need to basically use it like a scarf and i believe i did it this way with the wrinkle. No, I did it that way. Okay. And the hard part is really getting it on the head without completely hindering the head. And you want to go ahead and put the face mask back on because I don't think you're going to be able to otherwise. And you can wrap this all the way around. Like I said, it is wired. So you can kind of have it do whatever it is you need it to do. Something like that. So you can really give him that vagabond look, like so. And it's your, your toy. Figure out how you want to play with it. You can make that blow however which way. Originally, I had it just going out the back and just covering his face a little bit more, being all mysterious-like. And then kind of just cross it over, just tilt him up just a little. So you can do something like that. Tilt the face up. So you can get some coolness happening there. And of course you can finagle the back end however you need to. Like so. Like it's blowing in the wind. So it's a neat feature. And in fact, I'm going to be borrowing that idea. Now the bulge in the chest right there, the actual little, like the cockpit as I called it, does sort of get in the way when you're trying to pose this part, but it is what it is. If you want to get a little tighter with it, you can. I'm going to literally tie around his face, like so. And like I said, you can tilt him. So that will probably be how I'd pose him for the thumbnail, honestly. Oop, I knocked his I, I turned off his shoulder. There we go. So that's pretty awesome and that's that's the end of the accessories because i mean really that's what you're getting with this you're getting a buttload of accessories <laughs>guys so going into articulation i did manage to actually make this happen it took quite a lot of finagling but i got it so let's go ahead and get his hands out of here honestly <laughs> to make my life so much easier he's not holding on to anything i can really show off his articulation come on i did that badly not gonna lie i did that a little badly but i was playing around getting some cool thumbnail shots stuff like that so, actually, let's go ahead and kill the lights for the time being. Okay, so, going for articulation. Let's start at the head, like you do. And it's definitely a hinge at the bottom. Probably got to be 
ball joint or some kind there. One at the base of the head. So probably something like a double ball joint, although it's... There we go. He can look really far down. I wasn't sure. Because this thing is still very stiff. I've only had it for a couple weeks now, and some things haven't quite gotten there. So he can rotate. You just got to watch out for that painted chin up way down tilt side to side a little pretty good now the shoulders and this is where we get into some good stuff as we've already seen so you get your basic shoulder rotation also to see all that nice and die cast inside there some nice paint as well you do get a shoulder hinge that does move this way, and you have a flap that will get out of your way as you work it, and then you can get a good high teacher. Now, also, you get butterfly joint like so, also nice and expandy. Looks good, painted all on the inside as well, but also has reverse butterfly joint, so shoulder goes the other way so it's nice compound everything going on there bicep rotation a double jointed elbow so here and here yay and something I really dig and also allows you to really get that kind of hands in front of them is forearm rotation and you guys know I love me some forearm rotation cool thing is you got a slightly spring-loaded little flappy flap here so it rotates like so so you can get some cool forearm like that that is also very very Gundam like if I'm honest I like the fact that because he's square all the way around it does work no matter which direction you're facing you do get some hinge here in the wrist going outward pretty much I think it's got to be on a ball joint of some sort of course we saw this part is loose when you take the hand off hand does rotate as we've already seen now the torso has quite a lot of articulation. You have an ab crunch that can go up, it can go down, and you can see some sympathetic movement here in the gray parts. So he can really, really crunch forward. So the back end, you can see really moves. You got a little bit of hydraulic piston thing there. I think it's probably a ball joint right here in the center as well for some lean, but you can get him really nice and hunched over works really well you get rotation at the waist you also get tilt side to side super super bendy side skirts move as we discussed before front skirts very Gundam like just ball joint mounts right here in the center so you can get those up out of the way. The back skirts as well can flip out of the way. So we can really see what the legs can do. Now it's on a metal swivel. So you can rotate the leg completely forward like so. Get you a good forward Spartan kick. He can go back but only to there. I didn't want to push it any further. I can feel resistance. You've got swivel here because it is mounted on a ball joint right up in there. You can do a decent Jean-Claude. Just very, very slowly pushing it to its limits. But like nice some silver there on the crotch. And you can see right in there all that nice cast metal for ball joints and such. Which presumably over time will work their way loose. So I'm going to probably throw some pledge on that. We have double jointed knees that, of course, you get some sympathetic movement from things. Now watch this. Okay, so you saw all this slide forward with that hinge. Now watch right here when I bend the second part. The hinge collapses in on itself to get a super tight 180. That is beautiful. Not to mention this entire kneecap area does rotate now you gotta be careful with that because it will want to stick every now and then like that just did just be careful when you're moving them around and you get some nice exposure going on there 
the ankles are really articulate as well. Now, it does recommend that you move this ankle flap up and out of the way whenever doing things. You don't want to scrape your paint. So you have what is definitely a ball joint way up in there. So a ball joint with a swivel, so you can get another kick just out of your foot. Kick, like so. And you got some good heavy metal and some good plastics here. By the way, I didn't show off the bottom of the feet nice and silver. Uh, the ankle does get some pretty sick tilt out of that. Nice, really ridiculous ankle rocker. It can go both ways. You can also tilt just the foot. And you can see you get sympathetic movement there as well with the ankle armor. You do get toe bend like so. So you can really get him like kick back. Can't see that. So kick back like so it's it's just really 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 good and considering this guy is heavy i mean it's it's got to be i'd say at least a pound something at least in there a few ounces at best it's not a light hollow figure this guy is super solid i guess i can zoom back out a little bit i didn't realize how much i zoomed in and yeah, we have yet to discuss price. There's a reason for that. And that's because this thing is ridiculously expensive. Now, mind you, it is an official product. More or less by, I guess, what I would consider a third-party producer. But being that it's a figure, not a transformer, they can go to the nines on the paint details and stuff. But uh, without beating around the bush too much, this guy's $300. Yeah. So I consider this to be something in the kind of hot toys area of collectibles. And I did have to put this thing on layaway at Hobbytown. And I did eventually, of course, pay it off. Uh, the fact that Hobbytown got it at all was really, really impressive to me. And I knew I really wasn't going to pass it up. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. And before you go, well, why the heck would it cost that much? This is a lot of plastic. There's a lot of plastic. There's a lot of metal. There's an infinite amount of paint. You have electronics being here, here, and here. Mind you, LEDs are cheap, quote unquote, but making a good product function well also isn't cheap. It isn't a thing you can do. You also get a big, ridiculous stand now losing this will probably only save you maybe 10 15 bucks total in plastic but you do get some very nice soft goods that are wired a lot of things like this you won't get a wire you'll just get some really crappy cloth now mind you these edges are not as shredded as they could be but it's neither here nor there that's actually really good and of course you gotta remember you have a buttload of hands you also get three swords which are all very well replicated as we've already seen. I mean, the great sword in and of itself is such a beautiful feature and something that is so intrinsic to this character that you can't not have it. And the fact that it transforms the way it should, it's just wonderful. Now, one thing I didn't cover, when you're putting it back in the sheath, don't push by the handle because it will want to transform and then it gets things a little wonky. But look at that, it's just... Beautiful. I mean, the craftsmanship is what you're paying for. And the fact that it's a third-party, first-party kind of deal going on. Yeah, it's just going to be expensive. It's kind of a thing you just got to go with. Now, they are doing significantly more figures right now. We definitely are getting Tarn. Yeah, that Tarn. And he is awesome. And if I'm correct, bigger than this. Also more expensive. Also die-cast. Also lights up, also comes with a buttload of accessories, and if you pre-order it, you get some other cool stuff with it that the regular release won't have. So, I might end up having to order that. Now, I don't have any particular uh, direct love for Tarn, but I think this particular company is so ridiculous, you kind of have to just dive in because after Tarn they've got their rendition of Star Saber and then after that it's their rendition of Optimus Prime and it's all an IDW sort of inspired deal so that's going to be totally awesome oh one thing I didn't cover how the shoulders themselves 
swivel. Sorry about that. I kind of forgot. But guys, this thing is ridiculous. If you are into Transformers, if you're into IDW, and you really love collectibles, uh, this is on the list for sure. It will definitely have a spot of its own, probably, in a detail. Man, it's just, it's so pretty. And I can't stop staring at it when I have it out. I really, I really can't. Man. But guys, if you like this thing, Make sure you give me a thumbs up on this video. If you are new here, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. I do fun, nerdy stuff like this all the time. Gundam, mostly, but Transformers, Nintendo figures, Marvel Legends, all the things as well. And of course, if you're interested in some Shoki gear, all right here on the screen. And as for right now, all of the merchandise sold from the Shoki store, along with the Lupus for Lupus store, up here in the card, all goes toward the Lupus for Lupus charity until the end of May. So, and of course, if you haven't heard of the Lupus for Lupus contest, it'll be up there also in the card and in the description down below, so you can go check that out. If you haven't even heard about it, that contest is going on. It is all for a good cause. But guys, that's going to be it for this amazing review Yes, the review is amazing. This review of this amazing figure from Flame Toys. And I will catch you on the next one. Remember, as always, to keep on nerding.